All right, here's your last lesson for the day. It's determining the equation of perpendicular bisectors. With perpendicular bisectors, the only difference is that the bisector does not actually pass through one of the vertices. What it does instead is it passes through the midpoint of one of the sides and is perpendicular to that side. It may or may not pass through the vertex, but the two characteristics is that it passes through the midpoint and it's perpendicular. So here's our example. We're going to draw triangle LAB. So L is at 1, 4. A is at negative 5, 2. And B is at 3, negative 2. Once again, using a ruler, connect those to make a triangle. So what we're going to do is get the perpendicular bisector of LA. So it's going to pass through the midpoint of LA, which you can see is there at negative 2, 3, and it's going to be perpendicular to LA. So the first thing we need to do is get the midpoint of LA. So x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So that works out to negative 4 over 2 and 6 over 2, which is negative 2, 3. So there's the midpoint. Ticks to indicate that it's the midpoint. Because it has to be perpendicular to LA, we need the slope of LA. All right, so it is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that works out to negative 2 over negative 6 because both numerator, numerator and denominator are negative your answer is positive, and 2 over 6 in lowest terms is 1 third. But that's the slope of AL. We need it to be perpendicular to AL. So the slope of the perpendicular line would be the opposite reciprocal. So flip 1 third upside down to become 3 over 1, or just 3, and the sign changes from positive to negative. So you're going to draw a line segment through that midpoint with this slope. So from this midpoint here, your slope is negative 3 with a rise of negative 3 and a run of 1. So your perpendicular bisector will pass through those two points right there. Perpendicular bisectors can pass straight through the triangle. They do not have to remain within the confines of the triangle at all. To indicate that it is perpendicular, you'll need that right angle symbol. So what we need to do is to find the equation of a line with that slope passing through that point. So the slope has to be negative 3, and it has to pass through the point negative 2, 3. So your slope is in for the m, negative 3. And you're going to substitute this point in for x and y. The y is 3, the x is negative 2.
negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. And if you subtract 6 from both sides, your b is negative 3. So the perpendicular bisector has an equation of negative 3x minus 3. And for the last time, if any of that was unclear, please make note of it so that you can ask your teacher on the next day. As with the other two, what we're going to do is draw the other two perpendicular bisectors. So the midpoint of LB is at 2, 2 and a half. The slope of LB is equal to negative 3, so the slope of the perpendicular line would be equal to positive 1 third. From that point, you'd have a rise of 1 and a run of 3. And your perpendicular bisector will pass through those two points. For AB, the slope of AB is equal to negative one-half. The midpoint is at negative one-zero. And the slope of the perpendicular line is then positive two. So from that point, rise of two, run of one, and a line passing through those two points. And my lines are off a little bit because we've got fractions in here and we've had to estimate a bit, but all three perpendicular bisectors do pass through the same point, and that point is called the circumcenter. Now the circumcenter is one of the most useful of the three points of intersection because what it means is that that circumcenter is the same distance away from all three vertices. So all three of those lengths would be exactly the same. And because of this, if you were to draw a circle with the center at that circumcenter, all three vertices of the triangle would be on the circumference of that circle. So all three of those line segments there from the circumcenter to each vertex would be a radius of the circle. It's all very fascinating, isn't it? This is the most useful of them all, so a lot of your application questions will be based around the perpendicular bisector and the circumcenter. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to determine the equations of medians, altitudes, and perpendicular bisectors. Because they are tricky and they are multi-stepped, we will be spending a couple of days on this in class, so there'll be lots of time to get extra help if you need it.